All right, all right. Let's see how this goes. a little bit all right hey everybody we're, this is a first time doing live like this so we're just trying to make sure everything's set up while everybody starts arriving here hello hello we're pretty excited to show you guys this aircraft We got another two minutes for people to show. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I got a screen over here to see your guys' questions, if you have any. All right, we're getting pretty close to time. What time does it say? It says 5.59. 5.59, all right, yeah, we're just waiting for some more people to show up in here so everybody can see this neat, little airplane oh yeah I need that <laughs> that'll make it easier to open <laughs> I'm gonna keep this nice and relaxed simple format all right six o'clock all right thank you guys all the 11 people that are here so far we're uh, pretty excited to show you guys this airplane here uh, really, really uh, interesting item. Uh, I wish it had retracts, but it doesn't. But we'll uh, get into that and talk about that, and we'll hurry and do a quick setup of this because it should be really quick to set up. This is uh, our first impressions on it. Also, we have not, uh, we did not get this airplane uh, before anyone, and so we're first impressions, first time opening it, and. Uh, We'll set it up and we'll get it ready to go for this weekend to hopefully fly. So, all right, how many people is it showing? 13. 13, okay. Comment if you want, to, want me to start continuing or start going with this real quick. So, who all do we got in here? You know, say hello. We'll uh, go from there. Anyway. All right, it's six o'clock. I think that's more than enough time. People should have seen uh, any kind of notifications. Uh, again, we're gonna keep this in a simple format, very chill, very relaxed, so you guys can see everything on this. We'll give you guys uh, the best views that we can on it and uh, explanations for the best of what we can. So this is the four channel X-Fly F-22 Raptor currently at Banana Hobby. And it is uh, going currently for $169.90. And so we're going to open this up while we're talking about it. Um, again, like I was talking about when people had uh, um, were getting into the chat group here, uh, we hadn't seen this airplane yet, but we're pretty excited about it. The only thing that we've seen is, is what XFly uh, put out. And uh, that being said, we're, we're all going to get this first impressions on this. So again, this is the twin... 40 millimeter series of this, this airplane. They're doing a lot of 40 millimeter type stuff, which is kind of neat with the uh, the X Flight Eagle that's out there, the, the wing with the uh, the dual motors on the outside. Kind of neat, kind of cool on there. That thing flies very fast for what it is. Uh, this airplane is 27.6, uh, uh, 
27.6 inches in wingspan and 37.6 fuselage length. Uh, pretty simple setup. This is a lot bigger than like a UMX airplane. This is like a uh, micro jet. Um, and our first in a scale type jet uh, setup. However, it does not have rechecks like I mentioned. So what you're gonna get in the box is it looks like it comes with some decals, comes with some Velcro and then your hardware and then the manual. So I'm gonna pull those out real quick. Kyler, you want to show those decals real quick so that people can see them a little better? Um, I haven't seen any of that, so I don't, I don't know where they go yet. Um, this should be a very simple manual because it's only a four channel setup. But what do we got here? So this is what you get in the box with me taking that off. How does that look on the screen, little dude? Hey, Phil, how are you? Pretty good. Um, so that's how it comes, nice and simple. Um, you can see, obviously, my size. <laughs> it's uh, you know a little bigger than you know my shoulders, but yeah. So uh, what we got that just came out is the wing spar. Um, it looks like it's got a pretty good uh, foam crate that's holding this all together. Um, Let's get into this thing. All right, so prop this up a little bit. So what we got is the first wing. I'm gonna pull that out. It looks like it's got uh, everything already pre-linkage together. What they did on this is a neat little setup is that they have the linkage arm has a little U bend in there. So I'm thinking that you bend the linkage to reflect the uh, the trimming you may need. Instead of using a, uh, a rotation type clevis. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, nine gram servo on there, and the paint looks really good on there. Um, there you go, nice and easy. There are no lights on this, from what I can see. More of that. Now you got the left wing, again, nice and simple on there. And it looks pretty good also. Now we're getting into what everybody really wants to see, which is the fuselage. Um, <coughs> the fuselage already has the verts installed on it. That's kind of a different thing. Normally you don't get that already pre-installed on there. So they are already on there. Look at that setup. Nice and, nice and clean. Two wing connections, and it looks like we're going to have to put the horizontals on. The airplane is, like I said, it is a twin 40 millimeter setup, 4S, 1300 to 2600 mop hack. What you're going to want in there, 35C or better is what you're going to what you're going to want. Um, it's kind of neat to see the dual motors. Don't know if that's showing up very well because we got a delay on the screen over here. Is that looking pretty good, Tyler? You need to let me know. <laughs> yeah. That looks pretty good. Oh, you want to go show that? I'll have a little dude show that in there while I take out the uh, the other pieces in here. Twin 40 millimeter setup. They are a 1413 5000 kV motor. 12 blade setup and the ESCs are 20 amp ESC. Trying to see if I can see what brand the ESCs are, but they, they could possibly be Hobby Wing. But we will see from there. Let's take a gander inside this cockpit. So inside the battery tray, the cockpit comes off. You got one magnet there, and then you've got the latch in the front. Again, we're getting the first views on here just like you guys are. So you've got your three, four connections right here. Throttle, rudder, elevator, and your ailerons. One simple battery tray set up on there. Nice and easy. This airplane, like I said, does not have retract, so you're gonna have landing gear that gets installed on the nose and then click in spots for the mains on there. 
Simple, simple setup. This is this is pretty neat so far. So we're gonna set that aside right there. <laughs> Looks pretty good. I'm gonna put that back on there. All right, nose cone, simple setup, plastic tip, like we want. We're gonna just clip that on, magnet it on just like that. All right. So now we got the two horizontals here. They look like they've got a pre-bearing setup already inside the surface. So I'm holding on to the actual uh, mechanism here, the, the, uh, the rod, and it just is locked in there. So what that means is that it's going to be a simple connection into the fuselage, probably by one screw. And we'll actually do that here live and get this all set up. Same for the other one. Nice and easy. Looks good. And feels pretty solid. So nice, nice setup there. Uh, like I mentioned, there's landing gear. Here's the landing gear inside uh, the bag here. Uh, like I, I mentioned, if, if you've ever seen any of the other airplanes that are out there, there's a Su, uh, what is it, 27? T7 and the T7 and the A10, they all have this same type of landing gear uh, that is a quick install and simple. I really wish that somebody would make some really small recharts. You're gonna make a lot of money when you do that. <laughs> but anyway, so here's the, uh, the landing gear. We're gonna just hurry and put them in so that this isn't sitting on the, the belly anymore. Making sure that I got the right direction on these. And then they just, Popped in. I might have that backwards. <laughs> We're gonna go this way with it. And clicked in and ready to go. Clipped in there, ready to go. And then we will install the nose here in just a second when we get that in there. But we'll set it into the spot so that you can see how it goes. So there's going to be an arm inside there and that arm is going to get installed. So if you see how that goes in, the pin just goes right up and in. And then you've got your, uh, your servo arm there that will be your steering. It's a pretty simple setup. Alright, oh, and I almost dropped the collar that goes on there, so don't drop that. I almost did. So that's got to go on with the wheel. Okay, we'll put that on. Alright, pretty simple setup. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually get this thing together. Um, so you can see how easy it should be. And we're going to find out, just like anybody else, all at the same time, how this thing goes together. All right. So what I'm doing is, is I'm just sliding it onto the rod here, and then I'm clicking the servo connection together. Always, always, always verify your polarities. That's the most simple thing that we do as pilots when we accidentally goof it up. <laughs> Yeah, small retracts would be awesome if they could be low weight. Yep, agreed. I have a feeling here in the in the, in the uh, future, I will probably try and put retracts in this anyway. I think the twin 40s are gonna have some pretty good oomph behind it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to make sure that the wires not gonna get it, not going to get pinched in the wing. Slide that rod over. Pretty clean setup so far. Now I'm going to slide the other wing on. Again, verifying polarity of your wires. And what's really cool is it's got the actual servo connection where it's got the little clips on the actual outside, so you don't need to worry about them coming back off. I'm going to grab these needle bows. That will help me align that, that wire just a little bit better inside this little nook on the wing. This, uh, this size of this airplane is very, very close to what you'd probably leave in your vehicle if you ever see a park you wanted to go fly at and just rock it out there. All right, screws. They give you a little, they give you some Allen tools for everything. I've got two linkages for the, the horizontals, 
I've got one, two, three, four, five of these Allen tip screws for your wings. So they give you one extra. And then I've got these uh, uh, horizontal uh, screws for there. And they are Phillips for that one. So you've got some, uh, I want to say two millimeter um, hex screws. Yep. For the wings. So two millimeter. And we're going to put this in the lowest torque. Yeah, how's it going, dudes? All right, so again, with any airplane out there, you do not want to over torque any wing screws whatsoever. As everything is being made with plastic, plastic does become brittle and it can be overdone. If you overdo that, you will either one, twist out the brass inserts within these wings, or you will break them. So there's your little warning do not over torque. I use these type of drills, but I have them on the lowest settings so that they, they will not torque. And then what I do is I actually get it to the point where you start here to get a little there and then I actually rotate it with my hand. And so then it becomes a screwdriver at that point. So don't do what Jeremy is doing with power tools. Yes, that's why I mentioned at noons. So again, I'm only going in so far. Once I get this one in. <laughs> And once I see that it's getting close, I then use my hand like a screwdriver. I should just turn it like this and then make it a screwdriver. <laughs> so yes, you do not want to over torque these screws on any airplane out there because um, you will essentially screw it up. And then you'll wonder why you did that. So again, like I said, I use these as just the starting point because I hate spinning them because I spin screwdrivers all day and then tighten it with your hand. And again, tighten it with my hand. There you go. Okay, wings are installed. Check that out. Pretty cool, right? Nice setup. Looks good. All right, now let's get these horizontals on there. <laughs> yeah, power screwdrivers, they're awesome, but they can do some, ma some major destruction if you don't do it, if you don't pay attention to torque. Okay, something very important. So because this has a key slot in there on this pin, you wanna ensure that that is up once you actually slide that into the actual fuselage, okay? So, just make sure that you have it lined up and then you're going to use your screws again I'm going to use the screwdriver for this because I want to make sure that I can feel when it stops if it was only magnetized <laughs> I got a new set of screwdrivers and I haven't magnetized everything <laughs> all right so because I twisted that I want to make sure again that that is on there. All right, and remember, hand tight is right, because if you don't do that, and you overdo it, and you take threads out of your plastic, then you're gluing things in, and then you can't ever replace it if you needed to. So, just some little bit of advice. Again, you line that up. Make sure you've got it to where the keyway is there. Again, I'm supporting the airplane while pushing down on this. That way I'm not destroying the verticals. Okay, nice and easy there. <laughs> yeah, pilot wheel. I'm always about hand tools, but like I said, all day at work, I, I actually repair altimeters and airspeed indicators for the U.S. Air Force, and I have to use hand tools all the time, and so my wrists and all that stuff feel like they got carpal tunnel, so I try to find advantages wherever I can. All right, so I'm going to look in the manual and find out which key spot uh, for the, uh, the elevator that it's going to want. Um, so it is saying for the whole reference on the elevator, 
it is saying for the second one and then the outside on the actual surface there. So we're going to line this in. And we're going to get it ready to go. Now you don't want to connect these up until after you verify that your horns are actually 90 degrees from your servos, okay? Um, so we're going to get back with that. I just thought about that process. But I'm just going to set these linkages in here for a minute while we do that. But if you had the power on the airplane already at that point, then you would just simply line them up to where you need and then click them into the spot. Be very careful. The plastic, just like any plastic, is it can be brittle on these uh, these linkages and so just be a little bit gentle with them as you install them on there because you can split them um, so but we'll go from there okay um, let's get this nose wheel on real quick and then we'll put the receiver in and then we'll set up our horizontal on there and so again like I was saying as this slides up through the airplane you've got this little arm the arm itself needs to be screwed in to the keyway on there. That way it locks it in at 90. Now, there's supposed to also be a little set screw inside here. And it is right there. So, as a caution, make sure that you don't do what I did and almost lose the little, the little grub screw <laughs> that goes into that, uh, this arm because that would have been fun. All right. So I'm going to pre-stage that grub screw to where I can see that it goes all the way through. Now I'm going to install the wheel back into the fuselage. I'm going to press down on this so that it stays. Actually, I'm going to put a screwdriver in there to kind of hold it down. And now I'm going to align this into the nose. Now you've got to see real quick whether or not this is trying to say to put it over the top of the uh, steering arm or under it. And it's saying over the top. And so what does that mean? That means make sure that the pin is going down into the servo arm versus going up over the servo arm. Okay. And I almost think it needs to go the opposite way on this. From the bottom to the top. And that would have the same effect, but it would give it a little bit more to grab on. But, well, it wants the top. Okay, all right, well I stand a little corrected. Make sure that that's in there all the way. And then I'm going to cinch down this, this screw in there. All right. Get this Allen key that they provided. It should. it should only go right to the key, and I barely needed to even tighten that because I already had it preset. And so, I'm going to come over here and show you guys what that looks like if I don't die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right there, so you've got your servo arm, and as it rotates, That's how it works right there. What meter is this? Uh, the wingspan is 27.6 inches. So Kyler, can you do a conversion? In inches to meter on your phone. <laughs> or somebody want to do that? Oh, sorry, watt meter. What watt meter? I don't know what watt meter. Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> The airplane is a 20 amp ESC <laughs> or 
or what's a meter? I don't know. I don't know what a meter is. <laughs> I I only uh, I only deal with the inches on here. <laughs> oh, what millimeter? What mill? I don't know. I can't see what that's saying. All right, so we're gonna hurry and get this airplane bound up so that we can get the uh, um, the surfaces to where they need to go. Oh, the throttle was high on there. All right, so four channel setup on there. So I got aileron in. I got rudder, which is equal as the nozzle steering. <laughs> Come on. Had to rob this servo or this uh, receiver from another airplane. I don't have very many of these small ones that are four channel and throttle. All right, so again, this is a 4S airplane, okay? 1,300 to uh, 2,600 to be able to fit in that bay. Um, so let's see where that goes. Okay, all right, here we go. Let's bind this baby up. Okay, so we're not going to do the throttle cal yet, but we will. All right. So all we're doing right now is we're just trying to get the elevator surfaces where we want them to be, so that we can uh, get the, uh, the linkages on there. Okay. So I'm just going to temp install the receiver. I'm going to put this hatch back on to contain all that, and now we're going to do the actual surfaces. So what it's talking about for the surfaces, it shows a picture in there. You want just a slight elevator nose up. Um, and it looks like it's half of the actual surface thickness right here versus the actual points on the, uh, on the back of the, the Raptor here, okay? So that's what we're gonna try and achieve so that we could, don't have to do any kind of manual or uh, digital adjustments. And so just pressing that up, up and on there, it is gonna be too much on there. Um, the other thing is, is if you can, they actually uh, got paint on some of the ball joints here. You want to try and scrape as much of that off on there just so it doesn't gum it up uh, in later use. So I'm just with my fingernail just scraping off some of that paint. That'll make it a little easier to get the linkage on there. Does anybody else have any questions? I haven't been able to look on there. Tyler, do you want to read some of those comments right there? I'm going to tighten this up. Um, Victor said checking the amps if you use high voltage packs. Um, I don't. So we don't recommend you use any high voltage packs. Um, we don't test them under that. So if you're going to use HV packs, that's up to you. Manufacturer specs, when they talk about these specs on there, they say specific voltages on there which when you use HV, HV is higher voltage. So if you're going to use HV batteries on there, then it's all up to you what may or may not happen. And like I said, we don't test for them. So we're not going to recommend them. So, you know, it's like it says here, it says uh, 4S 1300. So, I mean, that's as far as I understand, that's LiPo batteries, not high voltage. So it may work fine. But we're not going to recommend it, so it's all up to you if you use HV. So, all right, so I am pretty close to that half the surface length, and now I'm going to easily push this on and click it on there. And then I'm going to fill, make sure that it's there, and it is good to go. Same for here, I'm going to pre test it, pre look it. I'm going to go and have another half turn on this one and make it even with the other one. And 
and then we're going to click it in. Okay, so surfaces are in. Check and make sure that they're going to be solid so you don't have any kind of play, extra play. Same for the surfaces on your ailerons. You just want to make sure that everything's good to go on all the surfaces. Yes, this is a twin 40 millimeter, so it is very it is it is exactly like the Eagle in regards to power setup. So if you have an Eagle and whatever you're using in that, it'll do the exact same in here. All right, there we go. So we've got surfaces on there now. Now we're going to make sure our orientations are correct. I'm going to put that back on because I'm a dumb dumb and took it off by installing. All right, so left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down. Higher elevator, higher aileron. Now it has the recommended uh, CG and stuff inside this. So the recommended CG is 80 millimeters from the front leading edge of the wing tip, okay, where it installs, 80 millimeters aft on there. So make sure that that's where you start, and then you can either walk it backwards or walk it forward depending on how you feel based upon your batteries. Now it's recommended that this airplane will give you a three to eight minute flight time. Now again, stipulation there is that's all based upon the quality and the actual uh, serviceability of your battery. So if you got a battery that is not a good battery, you're gonna be at that short time. However, if you got a good battery that actually works really well, you'll probably be able to get the eight minute flight times on there really easy. And so that's what I say about every airplane on there is, is, is all the recommended times are based upon your batteries and its ability to, to be, um, be used. So it uh, looks like the decals will be installed on there. I'm going to install them later, but you've got all your nav lights and you've got a bunch of other things that look like they're going to be on the belly. And so we'll put those on later. Um, but the last thing I want to show you guys all besides, you know, everybody set up your transmitter, however you need to for your rates, your expos, all that. Um, it talks about in here, it talks about your surfaces and your, um, your distances of what you want for travel. Okay, um, so it's saying in here, it says for your low rates on uh, aileron and elevator, um, it's wanting a 55 for aileron and elevator 50% or a certain millimeters on there. So it's actually got the information in here and your high rates, 13 millimeters at 75 for ailerons and 20 millimeters at 65% and then your steering is 50 and 70. So. Set those up to your liking. Always start with the book at first. If you want more, you get more at that point. Um, and yeah, pretty simple on there. Now the last thing I want to make sure I show you guys is how to calibrate your ESCs. As this is a dual motor ESC or dual motor airplane, you want to make sure that both of those motors are putting out the exact same thrust and exact same starting point and exact same ending point. So minimum and max are exactly the same. Last thing you want is uh, thrust displacement that is uncontrolled. Now that brings up another question too. Can you put thrust displacement on here because you've got two uh, ESCs? I'm almost guaranteeing you can. With two ESCs, you can always separate them, put them in another channel, and then that'll help with some wicked stuff. So hopefully that'll go and we'll see about doing that. But we're gonna test this airplane as is right now where it is not uh, not uh, thrust displaced. Um, so that being said, I'm going to show you how to do a calibrated ESC. And so what you got to do is you start with your throttle cut off. You turn your throttle up to max. Then you plug in your airplane. You'll hear the beep. At that point, bring your throttle all the way back down. and now it's initializing the ESCs. So what that's gonna do is that tells the transmitter and your ESCs what your minimum point is on your throttle and your maximum point on your throttle. So now what everybody wants to hear is they wanna hear the throttle on this. Um, and we're gonna do that real quick. So here we go in two seconds. Pretty good. 
Pretty good there. So there we go. Back view of the airplane. Left, you know, up and down. You know, does not have any rudders on there, so it's going to be a little hard to get the falling leaf, but maybe thrust displacement will do that. And so again, this is the brand new XFly 4 channel. 27.6 inch wingspan F22 Raptor. It's a banana hobby right now for $169.90. There you go. Pretty good setup on there. Uh, and I mean, it looks pretty good here. I'll just rotate it around so you guys can all see it. Got some foam on there. I mean, pretty cool little setup. Um, it's a lot bigger than the twin or the single 50 millimeter one that was out there for a really long time And yeah Pretty neat. It's neat to see it's some dual motor airplanes out there So stay tuned for more If you have any questions, make sure you hit comments on there. You can text message me uh, on messenger You can hit me up on Facebook YouTube any of that kind of stuff um, But there you go Awesome little airplane Stay tuned for the flight videos on there. We're going to do live maiden on there so you guys can actually see everything as it is. Uh, that way there's no curtains hiding anything and you get to see some fun. So that being said, again, I'm Jeremy Sol with Banana Hobby. And uh, thanks, little dude, for being our cameraman. Appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for more. Thanks again for watching.